What is going on everybody? We're on here with Get Fat Food. Welcome back to the channel. Another daily commute here. Heading home. It's uh, Labor Day weekend. So hopefully you guys are uh, going to have a safe and fun Labor Day weekend. Maybe you're going somewhere. Maybe you're just staying home relaxing. Or maybe you're getting shit done. In any case, I was hoping I'd get off early. But it's like, uh, it's like almost five. So, I guess not. I usually leave work around four. 4 4 30 so anyway um, I wanted to talk about what I used to do and for 12 years of my life I was a cook um, I've cooked at a steakhouse I've cooked at McDonald's that kind of counts I think uh, I've cooked at hotels I've cooked at restaurants of course like regular restaurants usually I just cook like American food you know uh, I'm a little ashamed to say uh, I am Asian and I don't know how to cook Asian food. I mean, I can cook chicken adobo. I got my own style of doing that. Got my own recipe. I can make rice. I know how to make rice. That's about it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I'm pretty good with following a recipe, so. I can always do it like that, but yeah, I'm sad to say I don't really know how to cook Asian food. I think I know how to cook Mexican food more than I do Asian food. Um, that's because I grew up with uh, I grew up with Mexicans. But yeah, anyway, I used to cook for 12 years. Hotels. Country clubs, oh yeah, I forgot, country club, hotels, steakhouses, it's just, actually it's just one steakhouse, but, yeah man, it was cool, actually it wasn't, okay, so let me tell you the, the good stuff and the bad stuff, what's the good stuff? Do the good stuff is friends, coworkers. You spend a lot of time with these people. You probably yelled at each other at one point because it was so busy and you're so frustrated. These are people you feel close to them because it's almost like military where it's like you've gone through hell with them. You know what I mean? And you came out of it and you got through it together. So that's, yeah, that's, that's what it is, you know, sorry to get all, all sorry, you know, like all, not all sorry, like all sentimental, but you know, I do kind of miss cooking, man. I used to cook, used to work, God, five, sometimes six days a week. And yeah, I do miss it. It was a good experience. Unfortunately, after after 12 years, I thought, you know what? Honestly, I thought I was just going to keep doing it. And it wasn't, if it wasn't for co-workers of mine, you know, fellow cooks, 
who were uh, about to retire actually they told me they're the ones who told me you don't want to do this it's it's not even if you really really love to cook financially wise it's not it's not the best career path choice unless you know unless you're going to own your own place or you know make have your own restaurant open your own restaurant shit like that then maybe it might be worth it maybe you can make some money off of that but even then restaurants are like one of the hardest most difficult business propositions you'll ever do in your life because you don't know if it's going to succeed or not especially brick and mortar restaurants i mean we all saw that during the pandemic the the ghost restaurants popping up <clears throat> but yeah i mean I, I miss cooking i still miss it to this day i still have my knives i still have my my kit you know my chef my chef knife bag it has everything in there what i don't miss is the money you just you really got to love what you do if you're gonna do that if you're gonna cook you have to have like a really firm passion for for cooking and what really got to me from my old co-workers is that you know that's all fine and dandy it's when you get older it's when you're like past 40 that you're like what are you like what are you planning to do with this you're standing up at least eight hours a day not only are you standing up walking around cooking shit but then you get paid crappy now let me tell you this the cooks the cooks at a restaurant or whatever they're they get paid the shittiest i mean some of them may have a good deal you know maybe you're a kitchen manager or a lead line cook and maybe you make more lead banquet cook maybe you have it you can get a good deal but for the most part you get paid so shitty and you know who really makes bank it's the freaking the servers they make the most money out of the workers though you know what i'm saying obviously the owner probably makes more the managers probably make more but out of the workers it's the servers who make bank the cooks don't make shit now the only good thing because usually cooks don't even get tipped out they don't get tips the only good thing is so the cooks make more than the servers per hour but obviously the servers make tips which you know really ups their their payout with cooks you get a set amount right so it's whatever per hour and if it's slow that's to your advantage if you're a cook although they do say the saying is if you got time to lean you got time to clean because <laughs> usually the cooks are leaning on the uh the cutting board you know talking or bullshitting or even cooking like crazy stuff just trying to invent something or trying to put something together you never know you're trying to put something together for like a special or those really work out well like experimenting with it having fun with it
So yeah, man, I really miss it. And there are times I don't miss it, you know? There are times I still have nightmares about the ticket machine going off. And you know, the ticket machine's just not stopping, it just keeps printing more and more tickets. Those are the stuff of nightmares, my friends. <clears throat> I just wish the money was there. If the money was there, I would have kept doing it. So yeah, being a cook, you learn some things, especially about eating out when you actually eat out yourself at a restaurant or with your family. You can, you know, you can tell when they're shitty. <laughs> you can tell when the cooks are just bullshitting and sitting on milk crates, you know what I mean? And what I used to love to do because you guys know I'm a fat guy. I used to just love eating, making my own whatever, whatever kind of food, and then just, just snacking, eating over the trash can, eating family meal is what they call it. I've never like worked at a family owned restaurant. I guess the steakhouse was, but not really. It was really owned by a company. But I want to know that feeling. Like I see the restaurants around here, some of them, a lot of them are family owned here in San Francisco. And you could tell it's it's the kids, the actual kids of the owner who are working it. And actually, usually, here's a tip. Don't eat the special at a restaurant. It's usually something they're trying to get rid of. That's why they make the special. God, there's so much traffic today. People trying to get out of town. There we go. So when I did leave uh, the cooking, my cooking career behind, um, and this was before the pandemic, okay? I wanted to try and get an office job. And if you've been a cook for 12 years and you're applying at all these like customer service, whatever, they're not going to want to hire you because you've been a cook this whole time. Right? And luckily, um, if you are if you are a cook or 
your server or whatever and you you have some know-how in the food business you can still stay in the food business business and get an office job um, the way I did it was obviously if you worked in a restaurant or whatever you've seen you know your suppliers the ones who give you guys products Cisco the big ones you know US Foods Chef's Warehouse blah 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 So that's what I did. I went to one of those guys and they got me a job. <laughs> and I think I'm going to stick with it, you guys. I mean, I'm going to stick with being in the food industry. I mean, I know enough about it that I don't know everything, obviously. So, I mean, cooking for 12 years wasn't a total waste of time because I'm still in the food industry. So... You know, that helps. <laughs> you suck. Yeah, I'm going a different way today, guys. There's too much uh, construction going on over there on Ocean. So I'm just going to head home this way. <clears throat> but yeah, guys, cooking is... Uh, like I said, again, let me just reiterate. You really, really got to love it. For you to, like, do it till you retire. Or at least like in your 20s, right? Because you don't get paid much. And it's hard work. If it's busy all the time, fuck yeah, it's hella hard. You just count the days when it's slow. Like when it's raining or something like that. Oh. I used to love it when I worked at the country club. Obviously, it's a country club, right? So, like, people love golfing or playing tennis or whatever. So, if it's raining, you'll still get some people. But for the most part, it's hella slow. They be chilling on my, chilling on my milk crate, just fucking watching stuff on my phone. This is when smartphones just started coming out. Yeah, cell phones, sorry, not cell phones, but smartphones were just coming out. Makes me feel fucking old. Because before that, I just had a, you know, like a flip phone. Before that, Nokia. And also, guys, another thing about cooking is uh, people keep thinking... Oh, you gotta go to culinary school and da 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 da. Listen, I didn't go to culinary school for shit. Actually, you know, I was thinking about taking a class at my local community college because I did go to community college. I just wasn't because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, right? I should have took a class on freaking what I'm doing now, being a buyer. Anyway. I talked to the chef 
at the college uh, for their culinary program. And he's like, well, what are you doing now? And I'm like, well, I'm cooking now. He's like, well, if you're cooking now, what the fuck you got to take a class for? I was like, I don't know. So it makes it more legit. I don't know. Will it make, maybe it'll make me move up faster. He's like, no. That won't make you move up faster. What will make you move up faster is if you're good. <laughs> if you don't suck. <laughs> uh, and then honestly, he was just like, look, a lot of the stuff you learn in the kitchen, you learn from the chef, you learn from your boss. He'll teach you. Even if you suck, you know, he'll, he'll teach you. So, cooking is, is more like, I guess the way I learned from coworkers and other chefs is that if you really want to be an outstanding chef, you have to jump around. What does that mean? Pretty much it's like you have to get an internship or work for a chef who you admire or who's like, you know, renowned or whatever and learn from them. Work for them for a couple of years, you know, and then move on to the next one. And he's like, if you really want to be a master of it, work for an Asian chef. I mean, like an Asian chef. I'm talking about like not the race, but like an Asian, like like a chef who works at an Asian restaurant. Okay, because sometimes they're white, <laughs> sometimes they're Mexican, dude. Work at a Mexican place, Mexican restaurant for two years. Work at an American steakhouse for a couple years. All right, work at an Italian restaurant for a couple years. And then you learn all these things, there's all these different things you'll learn throughout the years. I wish I did it that way. I just kind of stuck with whatever. I just stuck with American. So, yeah, guys, if you guys are ever thinking about going to culinary school, don't. Don't waste your fucking money. Just mentor, get mentorship from a chef. And I've learned a lot from my bosses, from my chefs during that 12 year period. Some of them weren't even chefs, they were just kitchen managers, sous chefs, especially sous chefs. I'm gonna tell you something right now. Out of all the ranking of cooks in the kitchen, I would say sous chef is the hardest. Because you're the one who's covering anyone who's out sick you're probably doing some of the grunt work for the chef. You're probably God, my brakes. As a sous chef, it's probably the hardest job in the kitchen. That or a dishwasher. I was a dishwasher as well. That's how I started out. Um it's hard, dude. Sous chef is just hard because it seems like you're like the first one in and the last one out. You're the last one to leave to go home. Because you got to make sure everything gets done. Because if something happens, not only are you going to get yelled at by the owner or whatever, you're probably going to get yelled at by the chef because they yelled at the chef too the owners or whatever <laughs> you know they they yelled at the chef too to yell at you and all they you know that, that's how it is you know they're pointing fingers you fucked up no you fucked up you definitely fucked up <laughs>
But yeah, it is funny. It's funny when they point fingers. Did you see me, bitch? Stupid. Oh, I can make it before he got there. He's so slow. That's probably what she was thinking. Bia. Anyways, that's all I could think of. I could talk about cooking more, but I actually don't have that many stories. Anyways, you guys. What the fuck is wrong with you, dude? You suck. This Corolla. Anyways, you guys, thanks again for watching. It's another commute. I know I said I'm gonna go sightseeing with you guys and show you around. I don't do sightseeing, bro. I don't. Because when it is my day off, I'm not planning on sightseeing. I'm planning on chilling at home, watching TV, and scratching my balls. I'm just kidding. But again, you guys, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you guys have a safe and wonderful Labor Day weekend. I know I will. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay hungry. Later, Gators.